Hello everybody. Yes, I'm very happy to see or to know that you have joined us for this first lesson on Thunder Eduke Life Science. Before I start, it is M Saidi. Only and only this channel will help you to achieve what you want. If you want a distinction, definitely you will get it. If you want something more than what you expect, still you have to stick on this channel so that you can get what you want. Thank you very much. Let me explain to you how this is going to work. Number one, the first thing you need to know is watch our videos on Thunder Eduke. Definitely, you'll get a distinction. Number two, you have to be with a book. Yes, that book, we call it a distinction material. There is no question which can be said by anybody and cannot be answered by this book. So make sure that uh, you get that book, you will be able to get a distinction. Number three, if you have any challenge, drop uh, your questions uh, in the uh, description. And if you don't get answered immediately, you can go to our WhatsApp page. There is a WhatsApp group and the WhatsApp page. So find out, uh, uh, get the link for the WhatsApp page or WhatsApp group, any, any, any of the two will be able to help you and assist you. Anyway, this channel is not only for life science, it is all the subjects. So if you are here, just be settled. If you have any question, let me know. We will be able to answer those questions. Let's start without wasting time. DNA code of life. So guys, uh, when we talk about uh, DNA, code of life, what does it mean? And what is it uh, included in here? We have been talking about DNA. What is DNA in full? It is deoxyribonucleic acid. That's what it means. But what is this? In actual sense, I don't want to go to all that and explain everything, but just to bring you what is DNA in actual sense. This is DNA code of life. It's not only DNA which is involved, but it has other information which is related to DNA. But why do we call it DNA? This topic is because DNA is acting as a king which instructs other molecules to be formed. So, because these molecules are the one which build up our life, our structures, our body structures. Therefore, we shall say that this DNA is the one which code for the life. So if you have big ears, big head, big eyes, uh, big nose, eh, eh, okay, if small nose or you have small head, whatever. What caused that? You obtained it from your parents. Who gave them to you? Your parents. So when I say you. Does it mean that I see your parent? Uh -uh, I'm just saying. So, these characters you have are being coded by the DNA. You understand? Therefore, whatever you have in your life is because of the DNA. That's why we say that DNA codes for life. Hence the topic, DNA code of life. So, whatever you're going to be talking about, here we're going to talk about the information DNA does in our body. After that, we shall see how does DNA, uh, these cells divide, and then after that, we shall talk about the genetics. But now, let's focus on DNA code of life. I repeat, if you have any question, let me know before I start to shoot. All right, DNA is the oxyribonucleic acid, which means that it's, it's this ribo. Ribo means is a sugar, which is called ribo. Ribose. When you say in science, os, os means a sugar. Ne? So, uh, this sugar, basically, if you look at it, it is having five sides. It lacks oxygen. When you say D, it means negative. This sugar lacks 
oxygen uh, oxygen somewhere and this sugar is called ribose and because it has five sides so in science we can call it a pentose so in actual sense we don't want to know about a pentose we just need to know that whenever you say os it means a sugar this sugar is called ribose but it lacks oxygen lacks oxygen somewhere in its molecule you don't need to know where exactly is it um, is the sugar being uh, lost yes and this sugar is 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 basically this molecule is found in the nucleus that's why you say we call it nucleic nucleic when it's one nucleus we call it nucleus nucleus if there are many we call them nuclei mm, let me just write nicely some people they're gonna say that oh you're right like doctor hey, hey. who told you at, that i'm a one okay nuclei if there are many so when you say nuclei it means that in the nuclear so we find this molecule dna in the nucleus we're gonna see why do we find dna in the nucleus not somewhere else you understand and it has an acidic component hence we say that it is nucleic acid therefore it is dna deoxyribonucleic acid you understand yes so uh where is it located let's look at it uh, the location of this dna you need to know where is dna located so if you know where DNA is located, then you'll be able to understand it better. All right. DNA, if you look at uh, the structure of uh, DNA, we say that it's found in a nucleus. Let's do a small recall about the nucleus. So let's call it, this is the cell and this is this, the, the, the nucleus. Yes. So this is the nucleus. Remember, if this is the nucleus, yes so this one is the cytoplasm this is great in or oh, anywhere you you started from cytoplasm plasm whenever i talk about plasm we mean a fluid cyto a fluid of the cell and then nucleus it has a nucleoplasm which means plasm fluid nucleo means uh, um, uh, nucleus so a fluid of the nucleus so the fluid found in here we call it nucleoplasm while the fluid found in the cytoplasm we uh, sorry uh, we find we find outside the nucleus we call it cytoplasm so you need to know two places the first one is the nucleus the second one is the cytoplasm i'm gonna tell you why do you need to know them because we examine this or we examine this depending on which uh, english do you speak all right dna in the nucleus does not exist the way you might think it exists as uh, something which is entangled you know spaghetti we call it spaghetti ne? yes noodles when you cook them ne? the way how they are on the plate that's exactly how dna is in the nucleus this is what i mean when you go to our distinction material book uh, it looks like this if you look at it here you will see that it is entangled you see yes so how do we call this we call it chromatin network chromatin chromatin uh net net network so we call it chromatin this entangled we call it chromatin network so you need to know that this wall of the nucleus we call it nuclear membrane the hole here where the dna will be passing sorry uh the messenger will be passing the message we call it uh the nuclear pore the fluid inside the dna we call it nucleoplasm and then the dense uh entangled structure we call them chromatin network but inside there we have a dense body which you call the the uh, nucleo uh, the nucleolus we call it the nucleolus that's the dense body which is found in the in the nucleus so now what happens when you condense dna what happens when you get the spaghetti ne? and then you squeeze it what happens ne? So in actual sense, what happens when you squeeze it, this is what is going to happen. It, it condenses. When it condenses, let me draw it here. 
when it condenses look at this critically because at the end i'm gonna ask you some few uh things which you need to understand when i bring this here and i condense it it forms what you call a chromosome it forms what you call a chromosome so when the chromatin network condense it forms what you call a chromo chromosome Zoom. this chromo the zone means a body which is made up of the chromatin network you understand so you need to understand the concept of dna code of life so that you can understand any topic which belongs to paper two because dna code of life belongs to paper two if you don't understand the concept of this you might get lost in other topics when we go remember that we will be having classes every day on this channel so make sure that you stick here you subscribe so that uh you don't miss out anything let's continue so it when it condenses condenses what does it mean when it shortens ne? like when you, you you straighten your arm when you bring it back you can you see that the muscles on uh, 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 on on your hand it it or your arm or your forward limb it it, it 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 swells it means that it has condensed that's exactly what happens so we call this one chromosome but what happens if you uh split you try to bring this chromosome down so you're gonna find out that it looks like this so this structure is what called dna you understand but now what happens if you open the dna the two strands you'll find out that it has segments segments each segment each segment is called a gene each segment each segment for example these are the the parts of dna which control the your characteristics for example you talk too much why do you talk too much maybe it was my father hmm. Why do you say it's your father? Because your father gave you sperm. The sperm has what you call the DNA. So the DNA has what you call the genes. So these segments on DNA, we call them genes. Yeah. So I think um, I I'm clear there. So if you have any question, let me know so that uh, I can uh, help you to answer that question. All right. I think we should do continue uh something uh think something's uh, let me do like this because yeah i think now everything can be visible mm -hmm. so we call this one's what genes so basically that's how it is that's how you needed to know about that so what happens after that this is what I mean when you talk about DNA. So you have the DNA here, the chromatin network. Yes, but what happens when it condenses? It forms what called the chromosomes. The chromosomes looks like this. It has two strands inside the here in the middle. It has what called the centromere. We will see it. But what happens when you pull it out? It forms the DNA. You understand? But what happens when you bring you split this DNA? When you split this DNA, it forms segments. These segments, these sections, we call them uh, the genes. We call them the what? The genes. So basically, that's what you need to understand or need to know about that. Is it clear? So now, what happens um, when it goes to that? Um, So I think now you guys, if you, you have any question, uh, let me know. So in this case, uh, we are saying that uh, this is a gene. And this is a gene. So these are the sections which you supposed to do. So let's look at what is nucleic acid. Nucleic acid. What does it mean? Nucleic acids. So what does DNA made up of? So let's look at it uh, in a little bit of uh, detail. DNA is made up of what we call nucleotide. They will ask you what are the building blocks of DNA. The building blocks, we call them nucleotide. Is it clear? 
Sometimes you call it building, building blocks. Sometimes we call it monomers, monoma of DNA. Sometimes we call it single units. So guys, when you bring this, is the same thing. You need to know that they are talking about the same thing. Yeah? So what are these building blocks? How do they build DNA so that each and everyone in this earth is different from each other? Even the so-called identical twins, the one you call that they are twins, they are different because you will find out that someone is big, someone is small, someone is more clever in the class, someone is good in math, the other one is good in math. You, you'll find out, you'll find this this dark skin debate, this, but you call them identical twins. They are not identical. They are not identical. You understand? When you go deep into science, you'll find out that they are somehow, somewhere, they are different. So what makes them to be different? How does this DNA makes them to be different? So these are the building blocks. They are made up, all of them, all our DNA is made up of nucleotide, which of which it has a circle, which you call the phosphate. It has this, which you call the sugar. And then we ha it has this, which you call the nitrogenous base. Is that clear? But how are these making it to be different? Their difference is because, difference is because, or they are different because, number one, A. When you look at your house at home, ne? is it different from your neighbor? Yes, they are different. Are you trying to mean that your neighbor, your house is made up of something different from what is made up of your house at home? It's the same. But how do you arrange these? The way how you arrange this makes the house to be different. So the way how these nucleotides are being arranged, yes, they make the structure of DNA to be what? To be different. Hence, the structure of DNA is different. Okay. When they bring the structure of DNA, make sure that, number one, the phosphate, you say it's a phosphate. This one, you say it is a sugar. Don't say it's a sugar. Say it is the deoxyribose. Is deoxyribose. It's a deoxyribose sugar. Because if they bring it, if it is DNA, they are talking about DNA. You talk about deoxyribose sugar. If it is talking about RNA, then you talk about the ribose sugar. This is what I mean. So, uh, the nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides. So, this is a marking point. Whatever you see in different color, it means a marking point. Sometimes you call them monomers. This is what I say. Sometimes you call them the building blocks. Each nucleotide is made up of the phosphate group. It's made up of a sugar. It is deoxyribose if it is DNA. And it is ribose, it is RNA. If it is RNA. Then it's made up of nitrogenous bases. These nitrogenous bases, they are five. But each molecule is supposed to have four. So the bases... The bases in DNA, DNA is thymine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. While in RNA, RNA, it is uh, uracil, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. Meaning that the uracil and the thymine, they interchange themselves if the molecule changes. Yes. So, guys, you need to know these are bases because these are the bases. If I can say that these are, this is what's called a Bible for this molecule. Yes, if you don't know them, then you don't know anything. So, you have to know them. You want it or you don't want it. Yes. So, meaning that if you have it, then you'll be able to get it right. Okay. Let's continue to the next sable topic. And when they say that, so this is how we say it in exam. You have to know that. Let's look at the types of the nucleic acids. 
when you talk about the types of the nucleic acids here we have two types of nucleic acid the first one we say that the types types of nucleic acids here we have number one dna number two rna huh. why do we have dna and rna because these nucleic acids are the one which control our characteristics why do we have need to why do we have to be with the two types the reason why is because dna is acting don't say it in exam i'm saying is acting you know the meaning of acting it's not true but it looks like is acting as a king while the rna is acting as a slave dna is always found in the nucleus this is true it's always in the nucleus while rna can be in the nucleus and the cytoplasm why this is what i said here that dna is always in the nucleus but yes the, the the here only dna is found here but here we have the cytoplasm so in that case we can find what you call rna is it clear so rna is always in the cytoplasm and the nucleus but why why dna is always the in in, in the nucleus first of all the nuclear pore when you talk about when you go back here these pores we are talking about these ones they, they are too small for dna to pass ne? and because dna is a king we said he's a king when a king wants something he has to send the, uh, a messenger somewhere so it means that it's only mess uh, rna which will move out of here and then it will go where dna wants the protein to be manufactured from for example you have cut your nail the dna will instruct the rna that go and make these nails so that they can rejuvenate again for example you have a wound the dna will instruct uh, the, 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 the the cells to, to the RNA so that it can, the, the, the cell can, can, can divide and then you have more cells and then what happens after that the cell uh, the, the wound can be healed so basically DNA is a king which does not move out of its palace that's why I called that I say that it acts like a king it's always in the nucleus in exam they'll ask you where does where do we find DNA DNA where is DNA located DNA is located in the nucleus and the RNA is found in the cytoplasm and the nucleus. Why? Because some they are in the cytoplasm, some they are in the nucleus. Why? Because they have to go and pick the information what DNA wants to be manufactured and then takes it to the cytoplasm. I think I'm clear there, ne? Yes. <laughs> then, when we continue to the next um here so we have said that so that's why you're saying here that dna is the oxidable uh, nucleic acid there is something which you need to know here when you are defining dna in full you will say ribo but if we are identifying the sugar found in dna we shall say ribose you see now the difference yes if it's about the sugar we shall say deoxy d oxyribose so this is equal to the sugar which is found in dna but if you are talking about the the the, the what is dna in full we shall say the oxyribonucleic acid someone will ask me why if you add the sugar in the milk in milk does it remain sugar no so if this ribose is added is something else has been added there does it remain the actual 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 sugar no it only has this so-called backbone yes so basically that's it uh let's just talk about the location of dna meaning that those are the types of dna and then the structure of dna and we do one activity and then we shall close for today's class then we wait for tomorrow's class don't forget that every day we have a class which we conduct so that we help you achieve distinction Make sure that you get a distinction material book so that you are able to uh, get it right. All right. Sorry. All right.
types of DNA. DNA are classified based on the uh, where are they located. The location of DNA will give us or is equal to the types. You need to know that. You need not know to cram cram too much. As if you are just cramming, Baba. Your head is going to be big, Baba. I'm telling you. Just understand. Understand. Just understand. Because if you, you are just cramming and then they tilt a bit, ah, you are gone. Guys, make sure that you understand. Because passing, passing is equal to understanding. Understanding. Eh? But is equal to practicing many questions. Yes. Anyway, uh, let's let's continue. <laughs> so if DNA is located in the nucleus, what does it mean? So therefore is gonna call nuclear nuclear DNA. If DNA is found in the chloroplast, ne? so it's gonna become uh chloroplastic plastic. DNA. You see, if DNA is found in the mitochondria, chondrion, if it's one, it's mitochondrion. If there are many, we call them uh, mitochondria. So it's going to become mitochondrial DNA. You see? So the, the, the location is equal to the type of, of D, uh, DNA. So this is what I mean here. The, the, the location, the location, nuclear DNA is called nuclear DNA because it is found in the nucleus. We call them uh, mitochondrial DNA because it is found in the mitochondria. We call them chloroplastic DNA because it is found in the chloroplast. Guys, how do we set questions here? You see this different color, it means that it's a marking point. Make sure that it, these different colors, you know that that's a marking point. So, how do we set? We can ask you a question that. List two places where you can find DNA other than the nucleus. Hey. Two places where you can find DNA other than the nucleus. So you're going to talk about the mitochondria, not the mitochondrial DNA. They are saying places, location, ne? location, you understand, not type. So places, we're going to say mitochondria or mitochondrion. If it's one, then you're going to talk about the chloroplast. So the chloroplast, which gives us the chloroplastic DNA. Yes. Another question they can ask you. They brought even this last year. Yeah. Another question they ask you. Other than, uh -uh, they can ask you, list two places where you can find DNA in animal cell. In animal cell. Animal cell. Someone is going to say chloroplast. I'll ask you a question. Have you ever seen an animal which is green in color? No. So we find chloroplast. The chloroplast are the one which makes our plants to be green. So we don't expect to find chloroplastic DNA in animal cell because we don't have any animal which is green in color. So done. We don't ask you too much questions there, but you need to know the types of DNA. So the type of DNA we're going to look at mostly is the nuclear DNA. Yes. So that's the type of DNA we're going to look at in detail. Okay. Let's go. I, I'm not going to talk about his uh, discovery of uh, DNA now, but I'll talk about the structure of DNA. The structure of DNA. Guys, you don't need to cram. No, man. There is no need for you to cram. What do we need to do? You need to know the idea. The moment you know the idea, then you'll be able to, to do everything. You understand? Yes. You will be able to know everything. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. Uh -huh. Know the structure of DNA. Ne? You need to know the structure of what? Of DNA. What do I mean? When you say DNA is made up of a nucleotide. Look at me critically you will understand the structure of DNA and you will not revise it again until you go for your exams. 
DNA is made up of phosphate, sugar, which is a deoxidized sugar, and a nitrogenous base. Is it clear? Now I'm, I'm writing the point. I'm describing the structure of DNA. The sugar, there is a bond here. The nucleotides are, 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 are linked together by sugar phosphate bond. Sugar phosphate bond. So it means that I have another, sorry, I have another sugar here, another sugar here, and then a nitrogenous base. And then I have another phosphate, so they are being grouped like that. You understand? And then now, we shall say that uh, it is made up of two strands. So it means that I have another strand. Each strand, these strands are joined together by weak hydrogen bonds. So it means that it has another strand this side. These strands are, made, are joined together by weak hydrogen bonds. I will explain again just when to, how do you uh, remember this? Yeah. So by weak hydrogen bonds, and then you have a sugar here. Yes, you have sugar there, and then you have again. So there is a bond. The bond is supposed to be actually here. Yes, supposed to be actually there. So now, uh, let me just specify here. The nitrogenous bases include adenine, thymine, guanine, and the cytosine. It's a marking point. I will show you. Whereby adenine combined with thymine and the cytosine combined with guanine. And if we go into specific, cytosine and guanine, they have three bonds. So in case they don't give you what is here, what is here, but you see that there are three bonds, then you just know that that is cytosine and guanine. And then this is adenine and that. So basically, they twist around to form a double helix. So how do we write an exam? You will talk about DNA is made up of a nucleotide. This is called a nucleotide. All this is called what? Let me just do like this. And then I say, this is called a nucleotide. This. Ne? All this is called a nucleotide. Ne? I hope you are seeing what I'm saying. That is called a nucleotide. Then we call this a phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar, and then a nitrogenous base. In this case, it is adenine. We call this one weak hydrogen bonds. Weak hydrogen bonds. Someone was asking, what's the function of weak hydrogen bonds? Is to hold the two strands together. Why are they weak? Because they are supposed to break down so that they, there will be DNA replication. The DNA must multiply. We shall see it in future. Actually, maybe the next lesson or the next the, 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 the third lesson. Né? Yes. So, now... We call this one weak hydrogen bond. is a marking point. It has is made up of uh, four nitrogenous bases: adenine, guanine, cytosine, uh, and uh, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. is a marking point whereby adenine goes with thymine. You can say thymine goes with adenine is the same thing. is a marking point with the cytosine and the guanine. So you mentioning this one pairs with this. This one pairs with this is a marking point. This, we call them complementary base pairs. We call them what? Complementary base pairs. Yes. Guys, let me know if you have any question. Eh? Yes, let me know if you have any question. So, we call it complementary base pairs. These two and this one. Why are they complementary? It's like this is your leg, the left one and the right one. So the, le the, the left, re uh, left leg is equal to the right leg, but in opposite way. Meaning that you can't put the shoe of left into right. Uh -uh. When you put them, they must fit snugly. They are not tight. Snugly. Ne? Meaning that they must be complementary to each other. Look, a key and a lock, they are complementary to each other. You can't bring a key and a key and you expect 
them to work. Uh -uh. You can't bring a lock and lock and you expect to. No, it must be a key and a lock. The same thing. You can't say C goes with C. Never. They won't click. You can't say G goes with G. Never. They won't click. You can't say that T goes with A. They won't click. Sorry. T goes with G. They won't click. No. They will only click if they are complementary. So that's why we call these ones, we call these, these, these bases, we call these bases complementary base pairs. Complementary base pairs. That's the meaning. Yes. So now, what happens? So it twists around because it's made up of two strands. It's also a marking point. It twists around to form a double helix. Question, what is the natural shape of DNA? Guys, there is no any other answer we're going to accept in the final exam or any exam if your teacher gives it to you, is giving it to you, is a bribe. Let me say like that. Is making you to fail because you won't get it. The only answer we accept there when you are marking, when you are marking there, when you are marking it there, I repeat, is double helix. You understand? Yes. So basically, that, 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 that is it. So it is DNA double helix. So the DNA is double helix. Yeah. Let's go to our distinction material book. And then you see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, this is our distinction material book. What are they saying? They are saying that DNA... DNA, describe the structure of DNA, six marks or seven marks. Remember, we no longer bring ten mark questions. We only bring the short questions. It is made up of nucleotide. I talked about it. Ne? Uh, there is something which I need to show you, okay, about this DNA. Ne? We call this, I was saying, we call this without, we call this a backbone. Backbone. Back. Bone. Yeah. Without these nitrogenous bases, ne? we call them backbone. There are some books they talk about the, the nitrogenous bases being the purine and the pyramidins. Uh, we're no longer sitting that. We're no longer sitting that. So meaning that mm, we don't need to know them that much. But purine, purine means is is when you say purine, purine, ne? and then pyra. The one which has Y is the, the pyramidin. Thy Thy, you see, thymine, Cy, cytosine. So this is a pyramidin, this is a pyramidin. So we don't ask you that much, né? Yeah, we don't ask you that much. But when you go to the university, definitely you have to know it. All right, describe the structure of DNA. Let's go to our distinction material book. Yes, Excel in life science. Yes. So you're saying that it's made up of nucleotide. One mark. Each nucleotide has a phosphate group, you see? Phosphate group, we talked about it. Phosphate group, deoxyribose sugar, and nitrogenous base. With this one, we group it as one mark. Ne? And unfortunately, if you miss one, you lose it all. It's all or nothing low. You either get all of it, you get all of it, or you lose all of it. Yes. So, phosphate group, deoxyribose sugar, nitrogenous base, a mark. The, nitrogen, the nucleotides are joined together by phosphate sugar bond. You see, phosphate, sugar, bone. This, this is what I say. It's, 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 it's a phosphate and a sugar. Phosphate, sugar, bone. Phosphate, sugar. Phosphate, you understand. Yes, that's what they are saying. And then they're saying that to form a strand. There are four nitrogenous bases. I say that if you mention it, you, get you, you give you a mark. However, when you say that, complemented to each other, whereby adenine pairs with it, thymine and the cytosine Bears with one nine. All this will give you one mark. You see? Yes, you have to know how do we mark when we set a paper for you so that you know exactly what you should not miss. When you use this distinction material your book, it will help you as a guide for you and you'll never find a question which cannot be answered. All right. Nitrogenous bases linked by hydrogen bond to form two strands the nitrogen we, you see we said the word weak must be there don't say hydrogen bond this is not physical science weak hydrogen bond we want to see that word weak hydrogen bond don't tell me that the other teacher gave you last time uh -uh, doesn't work like that 
gave you because maybe it was lenient. Therefore, make sure that you put the word weak hydrogen bond. The bond to form two strands. To form what? Two strands. You form two strands. These are the strands. Don't confuse the two strands and the double helix. Yes. So those are two different things. The two strands are different from double helix. So this is strand number one, strand number one, yes, and then this is strand number two, this, and then this. You understand? So it forms two strands, yes, and then to form a double helix. Why do we call it a double helix? It's because it's double helical. Is helical means that it's like that, ne? but because it has two of them, these two they join together. For example, that one joins with this one to form double helical. But because I'm describing that, then it becomes double helix. I remember when I was teaching a certain school, I told them that someone can say continue, continuous. Double helico, double helix. You see, the uh, one is is like a, an action for something. One is describing something. Me, I'm not that good in English because that's not my mother tongue or language. Okay, sharp. All right, eh, that's what I mean. So it's double helix. Please don't use double helico. We'll give you a zero with the eyes. I'm telling you, we will give you zero with the eyes with. Yeah, so make sure that please don't use double helical is double helix. So basically, that's what you need to know about that. So here is the structure of DNA, nucleotide, sorry, a phosphate, uh, a, a phosphate, a sugar, phosphate, sugar. So we, we say that we call this thing, the thing, a back, back, bone. Yes, but we call the whole thing, this whole thing. A strand, strand of DNA, yes. Then we call the whole molecule DNA is double stranded. So double stranded is different from double helix. You understand? It's double stranded, you see. But here we also say it's double helix. So there are two different things. Double stranded means that it has two strands. Well, double helix it means that these two strands are helical, helicopter, helicopter. Uh -huh must know how to dance helicopter helicopter so that you remember what is dna yeah. all right lastly what are some of the functions of dna uh basically dna is responsible for genetic uh material so inheritance it carries whatever you have i told you when i look at you whether i know you or i don't know you but when i find you and i look at you i see your father and i see your mother do you understand? Yes. Why? Because your father and your mother gave you the genetics. The father gave you a sperm with the DNA and the mother gave you an ovum with the DNA. What about those who resemble the neighbor? I don't know. You must tell me in the comment. Those who resemble the neighbor, you must tell us why do you resemble the neighbor? What did the neighbor give you? I don't know. All right. So, in other words, I mean that if you look at yourself find out tell me maybe what are some of the characteristics whom do you resemble more your father or your mother does it mean that your father gave you a lot of genetics a lot of genes no maybe the the, the genes there are more dominant we will see it when you go to genetics that's why i say that you have to know dna code of life before you go to any other topic in paper two then you have the second one it contains uh dna contains coded information information which is used to carry out protein synthesis to to manufacture proteins to manufacture proteins yes so guys uh, uh, our next class we're going to look at protein synthesis in detail it will be based on base calculations but before we go don't forget that whenever we have a class we must have to do some few activities so that at least we know that we are on track we must do some activities isn't it yes should we go for the activity should i give it to you and i see if you'll be able to huh, afternoon sir can i have whatsapp link Oh, someone is asking me the WhatsApp link. All right. Uh, let me drop it in the 
ah uh, the description just uh, the description i'm i'm sending you uh, 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 uh what mm, i'm going to send you the the what the the whatsapp uh there is the link there is the link everyone who is here make sure that you follow that link that link it will give you what is the uh whatsapp um you for you are following us on whatsapp so that you are able to access everything which you have posted even in other subjects ne? even in other subjects yes so guys uh let's do one question one question uh the next class tomorrow is going to be base calculation if dna is this base calculation in most schools don't teach this ne? make sure that you don't miss this class make sure you subscribe you like you share so that everyone is benefiting guys i repeat i need level sevens and not just a level seven when i talk about a level seven i'm talking about 90 percent and above yes so you walk like a giant eh, in terms of uh the content anyway um let's go to one of the questions here i've tried to organize for you and then we'll see if you'll be able to answer those questions number one when you find a question like this make sure that you you label everything so we say that this is the circle means what the circle we said that the circle means a phosphate ne? make sure you write a phosphate phosphate ne? phosphate and then this one is uh um now you need to find out the diagram below represents a portion of nucleic acid they are not specific is it clear however there is something unique which we need to know is it dna or rna because we say that dna nucleic acid is divided into dna and rna you see so now which nucleic acid the moment we have weak hydrogen bonds these weak hydrogen bonds definitely definitely weak hydrogen bonds you see these weak hydrogen bonds definitely it is uh dna so this is weak weak hydro i said hydrogen bond i said and i repeat don't say hydrogen bonds weak hydrogen bonds is it clear yes mm -hmm. then we, we this we say that this one is called a back a back bone a backbone and then we say that mm -hmm, this is the phosphate this is a sugar because it's dna we don't say sugar we will cross it ne? we want to hear the oxyribose sugar you have to be specific if they have brought a structure and you'll be able to identify that structure yes name number one name the nucleic acid obviously is dna give a reason for your answer they didn't ask you that question but we like to ask you that give it why do you say this is dna it's dna now you can tell us to let me check good 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 is dna why do you say it's dna uh we say it's dna because of the weak hydrogen bonds it's double stranded number one is double stranded number two it has weak hydrogen bonds yes will this one be c not really maybe it's they're just labeling it because of the double bond the double a goes with the t with the double bond the c goes with the g with the triple bond uh, but just in case they have just said the C, follow what they said. Ne? Yes. So it, you must not say, no, sir said C must be three bonds. You only use these three bonds if they have not identified this. And I ask you, what do you think C is? You can't say it's adenine. No. So the answer will either be C or G. Why? Because they didn't specify what is the side. So it must be the double bond is adenine and guanine. And if you even when you look at the shape, if you look at the shape the shape of this ne? guanine the, the, their shapes are like this guanine and the cytosine with a triple bond while adenine and the thymine their shape is like that you see so definitely uh, this is dna and then 
C might be adenine or guanine, so adenine or thymine. But still, we can be specific the shape of this, which one is, is but we don't need to go in that detail for this uh, curriculum. Yes. But still, when we are discussing, um, th those people are doing uh, uh, university courses, yes, we'll be starting the classes just soon, yes. But we'll be, when we are discussing that, we'll be discussing it in detail. All right. And then you're saying that what is the portion V? Okay. No. Name two places. Uh -huh. You see the question I talked about? Name two places where the nucleic acid may be found. Two places. In this case, you can talk about the same animal cell. So you can't talk about chloroplast because I told you we don't have uh, animal which is green in color. So the answer must be the neighbor is probably shared in his DNA. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether he, he, your neighbor, Mr. Hub or Mrs. Hub, maybe shared it. But we'll ask you, how did the neighbor share your DNA? Share the, the, the DNA with your mother. I don't know. You must. I don't know. Hey, Mina, uh, my mouth is closed. All right. <laughs> so you're saying that portion V, V, where is V? V. Let's clear up. Let's clear up and we see where is V. All right. Now let's label based on the question they have asked us. Ne? So, guys, make sure that when they bring a diagram like this, you label everything. Ne? You label everything. All right. V. V. Aha, uh -huh, all of it. They are talking about all of this technology. Just a moment. No way there is technology. Technology. All right. All right. It's it's it's, it's back. Uh -huh. We are saying that, uh, name two places, we say that you can talk about the mito, mitochondria, ne? and then you can talk about the nucleus, but they are saying nucleic acids, ne? so when you talk about nucleic acid, we, don't, we, we have not talked about RNA, so we are not going to talk about that much, but still the same thing. We can also talk about the cytoplasm, but they're saying name two places in animal cell where this, this word, say a key point, where this, meaning that they're talking about DNA only. So you can't talk about the cytoplasm because the cytoplasm, we don't find the DNA there. So you only talk about mitochondria and the nucleus. And why not chloroplast? We said it is because they said animal cell. What is V? V is the nucleo nucleo nucleotide cool and then you're saying that nitrogenous base w is w hey. so if you have adenine this side what do you have the other side check here you see adenine adenine is the one which has uh like 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 uh, let me leave it uh, hey. uh you see it's like a spear ne? so it means that this is adenine and then this is thymine you see what i told you that this can't be cytosine they just put this C to confuse you. Yes. So, nitrogenous base W. So, if this is adenine, definitely this is thymine. Molecule Y. Molecule Y is uh, a phosphate group. Same. Don't say phosphate. Don't say phosphorus. Phosphate group. Add the word group. Ne? Guys, always teach yourself to have what called a KO, knockout. When the examiner sees your answer, we do not think about anything. The only thing he's going to think about is give you a tick. It's nice when you're giving a tick. Yes, it's nice. So make sure that, yeah, you make him or her to forget that, hey, there is a wrong thing. The bond Z, where is bond Z? Bond Z, we call it, uh, we call the bond Z, we call the bond Z, what do you call it? Got a weak hydrogen bond. I thought that you're gonna give me the answer. Weak hydrogen bond. I said don't call it hydrogen bonds, we call it weak hydrogen bond. What is the natural shape of this molecule? We say that the natural shape of this molecule is double helix. We don't have any other answer. 
Yes, the natural shape of DNA is double helix. That's what uh, James Watson discovered. We'll talk about the discovery. Yes, you see, double helix with the complementary base pair. So if when you change this and you, you, you talk about something else, we'll ask you where you get that answer from. Yes, so it's double helix. Hmm. Name the process during which the molecule makes copy of itself. We call it DNA replication. DNA replication. DNA replication. So, guys, that's it. We're going to be talking about base calculation and DNA replication in our next class. When is it? Stay tuned. Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Yes, so we will have our class. Guys, if you have any question, let me know so that I can help you answer that question. Make sure that you follow us on that. Soon we are organizing um, a seminar whereby we will be there and then it will be there after March. We will push to finish the syllabus just before end of April. We will have to be done with the syllabus and then we will be talking about revision, 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 revision. I will tell you the subjects which are going to be invited so we will tell you guys keep uh in touch with us you will manage to get a distinction don't forget to like share and uh subscribe thank you very much for keeping with us msid as usual